coil sprung suspension offers less weight, less stiction and less maintenance than air shocks in some applications, but it means you have to choose the correct coil spring for your weight. Coil springs are typically used in high load applications like car and truck suspension. This is because they are simple and reliable. They're often used on mountain bikes in gravity focused applications where performance rather than light weight is the main concern when it comes to suspension. Coil springs are usually wound from sprung steel, but more exotic and high performance springs can be wound from titanium, which is lighter. They sit either on the outside of the coil shock body on the back of your bike or inside the fork leg on the front. So how do you work out what is the right spring rate for you in your suspension application and what is spring rate? Well, spring rate is a measure of how much force is needed to compress a spring a given distance. In mountain bikes, this is usually expressed in inch pounds, but it can also be expressed in Newton meters per millimeter. A higher spring rate indicates a stiffer spring where more force is needed for the same amount of compression. The correct spring rate for you is one that yields the right amount of sag, which is how much the suspension compresses under the weight of the bike and the rider. Manufacturers will specify what spring rate is needed for your weight on the specific bike that you have. And that will start you off as a guide, but you still need to measure your sag. So we're going to measure the sag on this bike, which is the DV8 Kurgan, and it's equipped with a coil shock. So first we need to wind off the preload using this, which is the preload collar. So we want to wind this off as far as we can without the spring becoming loose on the perch. So if you extend the suspension like this, you shouldn't be able to move the spring off the perch. So that's rattling around. So we've gone a little bit far. So we'll probably go about half a turn in from there. So even with the bike lifted off the ground, I can't really move the spring off the perch. So we know that's the minimum preload that we can wind onto this spring. Now, preload is the amount of pressure on the spring before the bike and the rider is pushing down on it. So it's how much the spring is preloaded. The, the key is in the name. Next, we're going to push the bump stop, which is this rubber bit here, up against the shock body. So we're going to move that as close as we can to the shock body and the dust seal here. And I'm going to use this pick. Be careful not to scratch your uh, stanchion. All right. So I push that right down against the shock body. We're going to use that to measure how much sag this bike has. So I'm going to sit on it very gently like this and just lift my feet clear of the ground. And then I'm not going to bounce on the bike. Very important that, because then you get a false reading. So I can see that bump stop's moved now. So is that where it needs to be? Yeah, that, that is moved from the weight of my body. So that's the, the, the amount of sag on the bike. So we're going to measure this here, which is the stroke of the shock and then we're going to measure how much the bump stop has moved. So this is a 60 mil stroke shock, it's a metric shock, and we can see that the suspension has moved 15 mil through the shock stroke when I sat on the bike, which means it's 25% sag. We might need a little bit more sag than that. Now, if we needed less sag, we could tighten that preload collar like this in order to make the shock uh, preloaded and make the bike have less sag. Now, you ideally don't want to do this because it increases the amount of pressure needed to start the suspension into its movement. So it won't feel as good, but that is one thing you can do if you're very close to the amount of sag that you want, but there's slightly too much. So that's the opposite of what we've got. We've got 25% sag just with the preload wound all the way off. So I think what we should do is fit a softer spring. Okay, so this spring, 550 inch pound, is a little bit too firm for what we want on this bike. So we'd be aiming more at 30% sag. So we're gonna take you through how to take off this spring and fit this softer spring. So first we need to undo the bolts which attach the shock to the bike. Now we're just taking the shock out of the bike carefully. Okay, so here we are. This is our lovely coil shock, brand new uh, Fox DHX2. Next, we need to undo our preload collar, which is this bit here. So wind that all the way off. Don't be shy. And then once we've wound that all the way off, our spring perch is gonna be removed next. 
So on this shock, it's got a clip. So we're going to have to take off this spring clip here first, which I have never done before. So we're on a, we're on a journey of discovery. It's fiddly. Right, spring clip off. Okay, so you've got to take the low speed rebound adjuster off as well. So yeah, I guess on some shocks, you do have to take the adjusters off as well to get the spring off, which is uh, not the easiest. There we are. Right, so then spring perch comes off. Sometimes these will come off with no clip and no taking the rebound adjuster off. So that's that off. And then slide the coil spring off the shock body. You're left with your, your bare naked shock there. So then you get your new coil spring. Here's one I made earlier. Slide that over there. And then you reinstall it again. So first thing we'll do is pop the, the spring perch back on. Then we'll get our spring clip, put that on. And that just stops the spring perch moving over the eyelet. Then we'll fit our low speed rebound adjuster back on. Just nip that up. You don't need to go wild with the adjusters. Sometimes people do, it doesn't end well. Right, and then tighten the uh, preload collar back up. And that is as easy as that. So nice and easy to change the coil spring. It's just about trying to find out what the correct rate will be. So as I said before, manufacturers will tell you what spring rate they think you'll need for your weight on their bike. Uh, so they calculate that for you, but that is just a guide. So we've gone from a 550 spring to a 400 spring, which is a big jump. You'd probably want to typically do jumps of about 50 pounds uh, at a time, uh, or maybe even if, if the sag's really close to being correct, maybe 25 pound jumps at a time. So yeah, we've done a huge jump. So let's see what it yields when I sit on the bike. Top tip, sometimes if you've got a separate shock shuttle, like on this frame, you might need to loosen these bolts because these bolts might be clamping it and crimping it together so the shock won't actually fit. There we go, that's a bit easier. Tighten that up, and then tighten these up again. So we've taken off our stiff spring, we've fitted our soft spring, so we need to push the bump stop down against the shock body again, same as we did before, and then sit on the bike. Okay, so gently sit on the seat, feet off the floor. We'll see how much sag we're running with this different spring. Okay, so we know the stroke is 60 mil. And if we measure this, we can see that it's running about 18 mil. So we take the sag measurement in millimeters, so it's 18 mil. We divide it by the stroke of the shock, which is 60 mil, and then we multiply by 100. And what is that? Well, Max, I'm glad you asked me that. It's exactly 30% sag. So we've gone a lot softer in the spring rate. We've gone 150 pounds softer, and it's yielded the correct amount of sag. Now, we won't know if this is quite right until we're out on the trails. And then once we're out on the trails, we'll be able to feel if the bike is bottoming out, if it's sitting where we want it, if it's feeling energetic enough. So a bike with 25% sag is gonna feel a bit more dynamic, sit a bit higher in the travel, and be harder to bottom out than a bike with 30% sag. A bike with 30% sag is gonna feel a bit more stuck to the ground, like you've got a bit more traction, bottom bracket's gonna sit slightly lower in dynamic geometry, and that's maybe more of like a downhill wet route setup, or, you know, it is personal preference, but yeah, I'd say 30% sag on a big hitting bike that you're going to be doing downhill with, 25% sag on maybe like a trail bike. So within that margin, it is personal preference. So I would now say get this out on the trail and give it a ride. But what about coil forks? Are those a done thing these days or? Uh, you don't really get so many coil forks these days. I think it's because the progression that you get in an air spring means it's really easily able to tune on a fork where the the ratio of suspension movement to the ratio of spring movement is one to one. Whereas on a rear shock where it's more progressive, it asks more of the spring. Do you have any top tips? Uh, yeah, so I would say top tip, uh, either look at the manufacturer of the bike and see what spring rate they say you should run if the bike is supplied with a coil shock. If it isn't supplied with a coil shock and you want to fit one, go online. There are some fantastic spring calculators on there that will calculate the spring you will probably need based on the wheel travel of the bike, 
the shock actuation ratio, and also uh, what your weight is. Uh, there's a really good one on TF Tune, for example, but other spring calculators are available. So that's how to find your correct core spring rate. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, do give it a like and head to the next video here.